Uh, cloudaccess.net, the former official host of the demo.juma.org, and the J Oscar winner of uh, 2012 uh, for uh, Best Juma Services. Uh, I, today I want to talk to you about uh, free, uh, free trial programs, not, uh, both in services and in products. Uh, I, I would like to like, kind of share my experiences uh, from back when uh, we had the uh, demo.juma.org and from what we have now as our free site program. We have a program where you can, you can just uh, sign up, uh, you get uh, Joomla pre-installed, uh, you get it free for 30 days, you can just, and you, you can keep like renewing it, renewing it. Obviously there are some uh, limitations when compared to our uh, like, you know, uh, full-time paid hosting sites, but this is, this is not an advertisement talk, so uh, that's about it. What I'm gonna say, what I'm gonna say about us. Okay. So uh, first, a, a few words about me. Uh, my name is Derek Schnick, but uh, uh, all English-speaking folk just call me Derek. So feel free to just call me Derek. Uh, I'm a, a support manager at uh, CloudAccess.net. I'm the operations lead. I manage things internal. Uh, I oversee like uh, creating documentation, uh, making sure every, everything runs smoothly in the day-to-day -day operations of our support team. Uh, personally, I'm a, I'm a singer. I've, uh, I have a BA in uh, music education. I'm a heavy metal singer. I uh, sing in a band called Headbanger from Poland. Uh, I'm geek and I'm, a, and I'm proud of it. Uh, if, you, if you're into any things like Star Trek, Star Wars, Stargate, Farscape, uh, Warhammer, Fantasy 1, not 40k, I don't like 40k. Um, uh, fantasy, science fiction, role playing games. If you want to talk about it, I'm the guy to talk about, I'm the guy to talk to. And also, I am a metalhead since I was like yay big and my brother like uh, pulled up his Iron Maiden, uh, Iron Maiden tape, Live After Death it was, I think, and I got hooked instantly. So okay, what is a free trial actually? A uh, free trial is something that will allow potential clients to check out your product or service for free. Uh, now usually when we think free trial, we think it's for a limited amount of time, like for or uh, just a limited content. Like uh, for example, back in the day, uh, video games had this thing called shareware, where you had like uh, you either could sample it for ten days and then it just kind of blocked. You try to run it, it would, it would just show up an ad. Okay, you want to play more? Uh, buy our game. And this thing kind of crept into everything IT, which I think is a great thing. But it's not only a it's not only a time thing. Uh, like I was saying, uh, usually when we think, when we say free trial, we think time. We think it's uh, limited uh, to how long we can use a product or a service. But it's not always like that because uh, it's sim simply not feasible for, for example, extensions. And extensions, when you have free, uh, Akiba Backup, is a great example of that. They have the free uh, the Akiba Backup Core, uh, the uh, free product you can just use, and there's. Akiba Backup Pro, which is paid and it has like m uh, more features and uh, support from the company. So, why are free trials important? It's just good practice. First of all, you're not selling a cat in a bag. You no, know, uh, uh, you allow your clients to sample your service or product get to know it, uh, find out if it's actually something that they can use, that it's something they're interested in. Uh, from a business perspective, it's good because they widen uh, your customer base. You know, if, if you only have a paid product, then well, some people will be just like, um, yeah, I don't want to commit to like a paid option because I don't know the service, I don't know the product, and uh, I'm just not sure if it's for me. But if, if you get, if you just, uh, get a free trial, uh, you allow people to check it out, you, uh, you allow more people to see your product, see your service, that's great. They are an awesome way to get leads, precisely for the same point which I, uh, which I made uh, earlier. Because, uh, you know, people will just come in, check your product, more people than you would get if you only had a paid product. 
they will come in, they will check it, and if it's a good product or service, they will buy it. And they help, uh, uh, in the, uh, they help get the clients, uh, apparently I can't, yeah, apparently I can't write English, sorry. Uh, they, uh, help, uh, they help the client get familiarized with the work processes of your company, which is a very important thing. Like, uh, a good product is a way to uh, find a client, but to keep a client, you actually have to, get, uh, you have to uh, provide good customer service. And that, the free trials allow the clients to check out your customer service. I mean, obviously, the customer service for the free, uh, the, what you do for a free product has to be limited, but more on that uh, later. What are the potential uses of a free trial? First of all, this, uh, the most obvious thing, just simply checking out the product or service. Uh, school programs, uh, this is actually a good way to like, you know, get the next generation hooked into Joomla. Uh, like, uh, we run a CMS in the classroom program where we, uh, where we provide like, free websites to students. They can you know, create their sites and so on and so forth and like IT students or, uh, and whatnot. And you know, uh, if they like Joomla, if they like uh, your company, th they will stay, you, this is a, another potential customer base, the customer base for one thing, and a way to just, you know, help the community by getting the next generation into the Joomla world. Another thing, development sites. I mean, uh, obviously a site doesn't provide any income until it's, you know, until it's live, it's marketed, and so on and so forth. Uh, so, um, uh, many people just don't feel comfortable with investing a lot of money during the uh, development process, even though, personally, I believe they should, but many people just don't feel comfortable with it. So, a uh, free trial is a great thing. They will just develop uh, the site during, like, the free trial run. And then once the website's ready to get, uh, website's ready to go live, it's ready to you know get attached to an actual domain name and so on, they will buy your product if they like it, of course. And of course, awards at events. It's uh, it's a it's a great thing. Uh, many many companies like at events they uh, give out either like discount coupons or free trials. It's a good way to market yourself to uh, give something to the community, like you know as a Thank you for it, for example, as a thank you for showing up at your lecture. Okay, what are the dangers of free trials? Because it really is a touch and go thing. Uh, free trials can very easily uh, get abused. Because uh, uh, just, um, how should I phrase that? People, uh, either people will, for example, not understand your terms of service, or they will think that you're just a charity, like giving uh, everything away for free. And that's, uh, you, can, you really have to like, defend yourself uh, from it. Uh, in, uh, in like, uh, specifically in the hosting business, there are a few things like potential uh, piracy through hacking. People may, uh, you know, hack. Uh, hack the free trial and use it for like for an F FTP server for a worse site like like I don't know they'll just uh, upload an entire season of uh, Game of Thrones to your like free uh, free hosting site and okay you can download it from here and that's actually hurtful for the company because you know you can get uh, you can get listed as you know as a company that does that sort of thing even though it, that wasn't your intention that's not your fault but people will try to use it in that way. Uh, potential phishing. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows uh, what phishing is. Do I need to explain it? No. Good. So yeah, for free trials, people just uh, we we do get we do actually get uh, a couple of those uh, every day where uh, you know we'll just find out that uh, I don't know people will uh, just spoof websites like Raiffeisen Bank or you know everything <coughs> to just get the credit card. And you know it's it's uh, the best way for hackers to do it on a free trial hosting because you know they don't pay for it but they can they can get <coughs> uh, they can get the credit card numbers uh, either way. N another thing they can and they will cost a lot of resources. Maintaining a free trial program is an expensive thing. It is a time-consuming thing because of the volume 
if, if, if your product or service is good and you're offering a free trial, it will get a lot of attention uh, and you, you will need a lot of resources to maintain it. What needs to be in place before you provide a free service? You can't just willy-nilly go, okay, I'm gonna offer this for free and see how it turns out. No, that's, <clears throat> I'm sorry, that's a recipe for disaster. First, what you'll need, a solid amount of money through paid services. I mean, you can't just provide a free service uh, if you don't have something that will, you know, that will pay the bills, obviously, and you know, you have to pay the team that maintains it, and so on and so forth. Uh, proper infrastructure. Uh, what that infrastructure is would actually depend on what actually are you doing. Is it, uh, is it like free hosting? Is it like a limited edition of, uh, of an extension? And so on and so forth. Uh, so solid ironclad procedures. Uh, many people uh, like put a little less value to pr uh, procedures and uh, policies. Well, actually, that is a very, very important thing. Uh, it's mostly to protect yourself from the, you know, the abuse I talked about earlier. People trying to get like more than than you offer. Uh, and you need you need solid ironclad procedures that will be followed. You need to like you know make your team follow them uh, consistently every time because if uh, some people if they see like a loophole in your procedures, they will abuse the hell out of it. Uh, clear terms of service, that's a very important thing. What can and what cannot be done with your free trial. Like, for example, like with free hosting, uh, you have to say that, okay, we don't allow bots, we don't allow, uh, we don't allow I don't know, game servers, uh, uh, auto-likers, things like that. You have to have that written down and somewhere public because if you don't have it and you know, somebody will set up an auto-liker or a botnet on your uh, free hosting program and you try to like you know put them off your network because it's not something you want to get into well they actually have a you know a real claim that but why it doesn't say anywhere that it's forbidden it doesn't say it's forbidden I should be able to do that <clears throat> another thing well trained tier zero support team uh, tier zero support team would be basically um, they won't actually do anything for the client, but they will explain how to do things. Like uh, they will offer up documentation. They will ask basic like pre-sales questions, like okay, what are the features of the paid paid version? Uh, you know how how much does the paid version actually cost, and so on and so forth. It is really vital because if you leave a free trial program unattended. Uh, it will lose value, and it will, and people will lose interest, uh, you know, in your in your service or product because okay, they'll be like, okay, so I tried out uh, this product. I mean, it looks good, but what now? I'm asking questions, and there's like you know nobody to nobody to answer those questions. So yeah, maybe I'll go with a product or service that is that has a little bit more explanation behind it. What do you need to prepare yourself for if you're, uh, if you're offering a free hosting service? Like I said earlier, phishing, you'll have a ton of that. Wes, that's actually less, uh, less popular right now. I mean, uh, well, where servers uh, to begin with are less, uh, <coughs> less popular right now because you know, we, have, we have torrents, we have like uh, mega uploads, all, all those online hosting services that don't really check what you're doing with them. But it is still a, <coughs> it, it is still a potential danger that uh, your free hosting service will be abused in that way. Uh, malware. Uh, like people will just like, I don't know, put up some redirects to that specific box. They'll put uh, a Trojan horse uh, virus of some sort of it. And bots. Uh, I've seen, uh, I've, I've seen uh, things like that happening where when a person will just order a bunch of uh, free uh, free hosting boxes, they will like set up a botnet on it to like uh, do DDoS attacks and uh, and whatnot. You really have to uh, watch out for that because if you know if uh, for example if a company is like Google or 
Microsoft, you know, the big names notice that, you know, there's a DDoS attack coming, coming from your network, then your, uh, your ratings will drop like instantly. Uh, you will lose respect in the, in the community, actually. And, you know, it's just, it's just bad for business, it's bad for everybody all around. So you need, do need to watch out for it. Like DDoS are pretty much the most, DDoS, at, uh, like botnets for DDoS attacks are the most dangerous thing that can happen when you have a uh, free hosting service. How should we deal with those issues? Well, first, automated script checks. Like most, uh, most hacks in websites, in Joomla websites, are done through base64 code. So you can just do automated scripts based on cron jobs. Just, okay, check this server first, check, check this one, check this one, check this one. Uh, tell me if there's any base 64 code. Well, there are legit uses of, of base 64, that's true. But like 90% of use of base 64 I've seen in Joomla websites are hacks. So that's what you should uh, search for first when autom doing automated uh, script checks. Third party reporting companies. I was actually kind of surprised to find out that uh, those, those exist. Uh, that's how we find like a part of the, uh, of the like, you know, bad seeds on, on our network. Like, there are companies that just monitor websites uh, all around the world. And if they see that you have a hacked website on your, ser on your, on your service, you have, a, um, you, ha you have a phishing site or whatnot, they're gonna actually send you an email saying, okay, um, under this and this address, this and this IP address, we find like, uh, you know, our client is, for example, Raiffeisen Bank, and we've noticed that you have a phishing website for Raiffeisen Bank, and could you please check it out? And then you can, you know, it's really, it's, uh, it, saves you, it saves you some effort, because, you know, you don't have to look for it uh, all the time, because it will get reported anyway. And a proactive abuse team, and it's important that it's a really a proactive abuse team. That they don't only rely on automated script checks. They don't only rely on third-party uh, reporting companies. They actually just get into the network randomly, check sites if everything's everything's okay. Because if you catch it in day one, then you know no harm no foul. It uh, wouldn't have spread <coughs> that far anyway. So you can just, uh, you know, yes? Uh, will this also prevent the same hacker group from trying to set up new trails if you kick them off very fast? Well, that depends. Well, uh, when, uh, when you find a hacked site, uh, you obviously, the first, thing you, uh, sorry, the first thing you need to do is find the attack vector. Find what vulnerability they actually use. And if you can find it, then yeah, sure, you just Patch, you just patch the vulnerability and that's it. No, no, I mean like uh, with somebody setting up a pushing site or so on. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, is there a relationship of how fast you get rid of them and how they try it to set up new accounts? Sometimes. So it, it depends, you know, uh, from, it's different from person to person. But yes, I have seen some people like uh, it was this, there was this correlation that they Figure out, figured out that uh, you know we caught them on early, so they were like, oh, okay, it's not worth the bother with it, not worth the hassle. But there were also people that just, oh, so they found found me on the first day. Okay, I'm gonna try harder, try harder, baby, try harder. So it, it's you know it, it, there is no pattern. Okay. It differs mm -hmm. from person to person. <coughs> um, <laughs> I lost my track of thoughts, train of thoughts. Uh, so a proactive view steam. Okay, I'll, I'll just move on. <laughs> okay, what do you need to prepare yourself for if you're not offering a free service, you're offering a free product, like a free extension? Everybody who has a free extension version will attest to that. Support abuse. They will be like, right, Radek? Yeah, every time. And you can, you can ask Nick Nicholas from Akiba too, uh, like, Everybody who has a free free product and also has a paid product with support to it, people will just go, go up to you and yeah, you know, I I know that I'm on the free trial, but you know, I don't know how to do this. You, even if you're polite, you just uh, you know, you send them a link to the documentation. Okay, it's well, we're not uh, we're not actually supposed to do that, but you know, just to, you know, to show our good faith, here's the link to the documentation. Here's how to do it. 
they were like, but can't she do it for me? Just like, you know, just do it just for me. I promise I won't tell anyone. Well, the issue isn't that you, if you will tell anybody, well, it may be, but it's not, but it's just like, you know, we have to keep our policies. So it's, like I said before, solid ironclad procedures and a well-disciplined, uh, I'm not sure if I'm using the term correctly, but I, I think you understand what I mean, uh, like a well-disciplined uh, support team that will actually follow those procedures. Uh, clients asking for premium features while still in the free trial. It will happen and their excuses will be numerous. Uh, uh, starting from, okay, just please do it for me, just why don't you do it? You can do it. It's not, it's not, uh, I, I'm sure it's not difficult for you. Every time I read things like that, I'm, uh, please don't tell me if it's difficult or not. I, I know if it's difficult or not. Uh, uh, and ranging to, okay, you know what, I will buy your ser paid service if you allow me to sample the premium content. And, uh, no, sorry, that, it, it just doesn't work that way. The free trials for, and the free, ser free features are for you to test. If you want the premium service, sorry, pay up. I, I have to make a living, I have to buy bread or something. Uh, if, if it's a good product, have a good server on which the, uh, the, the product sits on because it will get downloaded a lot. So you have to have a lot of bandwidth and please, for the love of God, don't throttle download speed. It's the worst thing you can do. I've seen, I've seen people doing it. I, you know, I want to check out their product and it's like, you know, I mean, Joomla extensions ain't big. I mean, like if, if it's a three megabyte extension, it's a big extension, right? But you know, you download a three megabyte extension and it's like downloading like, I don't know, five, 10 uh, kilobytes per second. Why, why would you do that? So please don't do it. And again, uh, you will uh, need clean and ironclad terms of service and just follow them. That's the key really to protect yourself from uh, support abuse. If you have clean ironclad terms of service and uh, well laid out procedures and policies, your support team actually does follow them, everything's gonna run smoothly. I mean, obviously sometimes you can make a little exception, but don't get into a habit. Sorry, don't get into a habit of doing it. How do you deal with those issues? Patience and consistency, patience and consistency, patience and consistency, patience and consistency. And in case, in case, you, uh, in case you wondered, patience and consistency. That's the only way you can deal with support abuse. Now, from a business uh, standpoint, how do you upsell from a free trial? Because, you know, it's always good when people like your product or your service, so you're getting uh, good reviews and so on and so forth. But again, gotta make the donuts. The world's sm smallest violin got gots to keep playing. So you need to upsell from that free trial. So, First of all, provide at least like minimum support. I'm not saying that, you know, if a person asks you to like configure your extension for them, don't go into their websites and configure them, uh, uh, configure it for them. That's something you can do with, uh, you know, with a paid product. But at least like don't, don't just tell them, okay, no, we, we won't help you just go away, pay up and then we'll help you. No, that's a very bad approach. Um, even like, uh, there's, there's a great quote from your, uh, from your godfather. You can't say no to people you care about. You have to make them say no on their own. Or you have to give them something. It takes a lot of time, but it's well worth it. So just at least provide documentation. Like everything, if, uh, everything has to be documented, okay? Documentation is a very vital. And if a free trial user comes up to you and he says, you know, I can't figure out how to, how to work this certain feature, I can't figure out how to do this, don't just show them the door. At least, you know, give them, okay, uh, here's the link to uh, the doc that explains how to do it. Uh, if you're still unclear on it, please, then please purchase our paid service. We'll be more than happy to, I don't know, get on the phone with you or just outright configure it for you. But for now, Here's the link to the documentation. And it 
your clients really appreciate that because you're ju not just leaving them with with a ticket. You're, you're saying you're telling them, I am willing to help you. I will help you. This is how much I can help you right now. If you pay, if you purchase the paid service, I will be able to help you more. Rich and abundant documentation. Um, many people uh, consider documentation only as a thing to help the clients uh, and to uh, you know to lessen the load on the support team because you don't you don't have to explain the same and same thing again over and over. You can just provide a link to the documentation. But it is a great way to upsell products because people will see that uh, the product or service is well documented. Everything's way, uh, laid out very well, and they will see that okay. If they if they put so much work into the documentation, that's you know it's for free. It's just out there, and they put a lot of work into it. So how good will they be when I'm on, when I'm on a paid service? They do really appreciate it. They really think from that angle. It really helps. A clear outline of free and premium uh, features uh, within your, you know, extension or uh, extension or hosting. Well, that's that's kind of a no-brainer, right? I mean, people have to know what they get if they if they uh, decide to go for a paid service. I mean, okay, obviously for a free service, they can just check it out, but it, there is a chance that they won't see everything. Because you know something maybe like buried a little too deep inside or something like that, they may not just not stumble upon it, not not know that you know something is actually able to do something. Uh, I, I've caught myself like on this because you know with extensions with like a le little pull documentation, I'm like just uh, you know jumbling around with them. Was, okay, okay. Suddenly you know I clicked somewhere I never clicked before. It's like, oh. It can do that as well. If if that extension had actual documentation of all the features, that would save me uh, the hassle of doing it, and it would put a message like you know in my brain, like as I, as I said, you know they they put a lot of work into explaining their free service, so they're probably even better on the pay service. And with you know outline of the premium uh, premium features, well again, don't sell a cat in the bag. They have to know what they're signing up for because if they don't know, they're not going to sign up. I mean, maybe a few of them will, but that's not the point, right? We want to get as much clients as, as we want. Everybody wants to get rich, right? So, you know, uh, just tell them what they're, what they're doing, uh, what, what they're going to get. Ease of renewal and uh, upgrade. That's actually a very important thing. Uh, I, remember, I don't remember what the extension was. It was a couple of uh, years ago, but I was trying to get a subscription of... Uh, it was actually a subscription component to make it uh, even funnier. I wanted to get the paid version, but the process was so damn convoluted. I mean, I, okay, I clicked purchase, then it took me to another site to like input my email address. Well, okay, I gotta register one, okay put in my email address, then I was sent an email, you know, click this, and I was like, okay, I guess this is the download link or something, but no, it opened up another website, which asked me for my phone number. At that point, I was like, um, this is kind of <coughs> fishy, but okay, I'll play along. And when I inputted my phone number, they sent me a text message with a code that I had to input on the website. And you know, this was... <laughs> just to buy an extension, I mean, and I was sitting there, and why? Why in the world would you do that? You want people to be able to purchase your service or your product in the easiest way possible. It's pain tolerance testing. Sorry? Pain tolerance testing. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But you know, such a convoluted subscription uh, payment process for a subscription component, <laughs> yeah, I, I I didn't actually use that. Use that. I ended up using. Uh, diff I think it was back in the day when uh, when Nicholas had his own like Akiba subscription system. So I ended up using that because you know I could just go in, okay, download, bam, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> and ease of renewal is uh, also very important when you're like on a timed service. Uh, 
the best way is just make it automatic, make it like an automatic charge and renewal. Uh, obviously, you have to uh, uh, keep an option for your clients to like you mm -hmm. know they can uh, so that they can cancel because if you if you uh, offer up like okay you have to per you have to sign up with us for like three months or six months or a year uh, they will actually that will actually lose uh, they will lose confidence because um, why are they trying to like you know ring me up for such a long term that's that's not not right but. Again, but it needs it needs to be easy. So, like, well, we just have an automated process. You can, if you just put in your credit card information to you know the control panel, then you know on the due date of the hosting package, it's just gonna charge automatically, and you know, and that's that, and that's easy. Or just a renew button. Just make it easy. Don't don't convolute it. It makes no goddamn sense. If you pardon my French. What if my upsell, ra upsell ratio is too low? What am I doing wrong? There are a few factors that can actually contribute to that. First of all, did you ask for the client's credit card information? If you're doing that for a free trial, first of all, the client is not actually sure if it is actually free because, well, if it's free, why do I need to uh, put in my credit card? But even if you outline it like very clearly that, okay, we're not going to charge you this time, it's just like for an automated renewal. There's, uh, I've actually read about it, there's a psychological factor involved that even for a free product, if people have to input their credit card information, they don't feel that it's free. They actually pay, they actually feel like they've been charged for something and it kind of defeats the purpose and they, you know, they just lose confidence in your product or your, or your service. Another factor, maybe the, if you're like on a, if it's a timed trial, maybe the trial period is too short or too long. It kind of ties in with like the next point, if, you know, if your product or service is something that the client will use on a regular basis. You have to figure out when and how the clients will actually use your product or your service and then figure out the optimal, optimal, uh, optimal trial period. Because for example, if it's a, uh, if it's a thing that people will like only use once, just set it up like shoot and forget kind of thing, and you have like a, I don't know, like a 30, 30 day trial, they won't purchase it. They won't need it. I mean, chances are they'll be able to do what they need in those 30 days and uh, within the free trial. And you know, they're just, uh, just going to leave it. But they're just going to leave it. They won't purchase because, okay, okay, I'm done with this. Thank you. And, but if you, and if, you, uh, if you're providing a product or service that the clients will use for an extended period of time, then the trial period cannot be too short. Especially if it's like a thing with a lot of features, because it won't give the client the time to actually go through everything, to actually go and test it. They have to take the, uh, they have to take the time with it. That's why like, for hosting, I think the optimal, <coughs> optimal period is, those, is that 30 day, Period. That's enough for the client to like check the Joomla features, uh, check uh, check out the control panel, and so on and so forth. And then they can make an informed decision. Uh, if you'd make it like I don't know a week worth of free hosting with Joomla, they won't be able to make an informed decision. It's just not enough time. And another thing, is your product or service actually better than the others? Because people check around a lot of stuff. They don't just like try first thing and if they figure out, oh, well, it's good enough, so okay, I'll just stay with it. No, people don't do that. People actually take their time. If, if they want to spend their hard-earned cash, they take the time to find out what's best for them. So you have to like figure out, you have to, you have to do testing, like A-B testing, like uh, Mike was saying the uh, other day, uh, or uh, like A-B testing or uh, UX testing, like Crystal was saying, just have to test every angle of the service and the product. Compare yourself to your competitors. If your competitor is doing bad, doing good, and you're not, then obviously he's doing something right, and you're doing something wrong. And you know, there's there's nothing wrong uh, with you know imitating your betters. There's nothing wrong with it. You want, <coughs> sorry, you want to evolve. You want to get better. You want to get bigger. Check out what the guys, uh, but there's, there's actually a tricky part to it. 
Uh, like for example, like Milton Freak Friedman once said, uh, Poland shouldn't act like a wealthy Western country because it is not a wealthy Western country. It should act like those wealthy Western countries acted back when they were poor. And that's the thing you have to do also with like, uh, you know, when you're checking out your competitors. Don't do what they're doing right now. Because it makes sense for them with their amount of growth, with their uh, uh, ratios, their business, in, their income and so on and so forth. You try to just copy that, chances are it's going to fail. Look into the history. Check out what they've been doing uh, two years earlier, five years earlier. How did they get to that point? Then you have a solid way of getting there yourself. The most important thing, uh, I kind of I touched that uh, uh, in the previous slide. Why, what do I need to succeed? What is the single most important factor? For your, uh, be it a free product or a paid product, free service or paid service, whatever. What is the key to success? Evolve. If you're standing still, you're actually going backwards. Because other people won't stand still. They'll go forward, they'll move on, they'll, uh, they'll check out uh, new, uh, new ways of doing things. And, you, and your customers will change over time as well. Uh, the, uh, you know, the taste is in, tastes in certain things, they will change and you have to adapt. Like every, every you know, businesses are so, sort of life forms, I, at least I consider them like that. And like every life form on our fair planet evolved adapting to the new situations, uh, to their environments, they adapted, they adapted, adapted, and the ones that adapted the best lived on. That's the same thing you have to do with your business. Adapt. See how the market's changing, how the customers' tastes are changing. Uh, check out what your competitors are doing, that's uh, what changes your competitors are enforcing on the market. If you do that, if you evolve, if you adapt, 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 and again, adapt to the ever-changing environment, you will succeed, you will be good, and everybody's going to be happy. Any questions? Um, no, I just wanted to have a comment, if this is possible. Um, my mother has a website, she's a doctor. The most problem is with doctors, they write texts for doctors, not for, for, for normal patients. Mm, sorry, come again? And most problems that uh, doctors have, that they write texts for doctors, but not for normal people yes. who have yeah. a problem. Yeah, yeah. And I always told her, uh, please, just explain it very basically, that everybody can understand it. And a couple of years later, she came to me and said, you know what, actually the, the, the time where the people spend, and I'm talking to them, reduced because of the amount uh, of the text we wrote there mm -hmm. uh, because they already saw it on the web page and ah, I know this and so it was really boiled down to a very brief short of time mm -hmm. and she got more clients because clients were reading the text of the doctor and saying oh I can understand this this is a doctor I can talk to him I understand what this is saying mm -hmm. and so she got more clients Yes. So this is really important. Yes, yes, it's like I said, it's like, you know, it's like the doc documentation thing. This uh, is the point where I... Yes, <laughs> the documentation has to be robust, but it also has to be uh, clear and simple. You don't want to uh, make everything complicated, because if people can't go through page one of your documentation, because it's too, too complicated, too convoluted, they'll just get bored. I mean... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, from what I know, there, there were studies actually, there's like a, the average person will decide within the fa first 10 seconds of either reading a text or watching a video whether they're actually interested. If you make the first 10 seconds uninteresting, uh, too complicated or just boring, they'll just go away because their time is precious, they feel their time is precious, they need to move on. So yes, that, that is very important, yes, thank you. Um, anything Why else? Are coders? Sorry? Why often clients aren't coders? Mm -hmm. And so to explain things that are probably dead simple to a coder, to somebody that doesn't have that base experience, 
Yes, it's, yeah. it's a whole other. Yes, you have to you have to explain everything simple terms, uh, as I said. But you, because you know, like when when I'm doing uh, support, when I'm help, helping a client with his Joomla website, he doesn't really care how the code works. No, he doesn't care what happens under the hood. No cares to have. No, he, he, exactly. He, he doesn't care. He just wants it to work. He wants to know if it works and how to make it work. That's the thing you have to explain. He doesn't care what's on the hood because you know that's that's a, that's a developer thing. The developers need to know what's going on under the hood. People that are changing uh, and implementing the code, uh, the users who are just using the product, 